All right, now we are to the S. Now the S here is trying to stay really blocky. And it's the least like, oops, it's the least like the, um, the one I've sketched. But I, I might as well try it and see if I like this effect. But I have a, a notion that I'm going to create my own S, which is kind of the water side of it. Yeah, so I can modify this and I can play with the curves, but I want it to be pretty significantly different. Right? And I might even have to get rid of some anchor points. So just to show you what that looks like, use the small selection tool, click on it, turn it down to 50%. And use the small selection tool, click on the individual anchor points, hover over them first, then click on them when they're white to move them individually. And then this is a good instance. I have anchors here with curves built in, but the curves aren't really doing much, so I can spread those curves out. And I probably have more anchors than I need. In fact, I know I do. So just moving anchor points as I've been doing before is not going to be enough. Instead, I'm going to use the delete anchor point tool. And to rid myself of a lot of these. So then I can use the handles instead to give me the kind of curves I'm looking the handles and, of course, the anchor point tool. So I can build curves where I need them and change their direction. Yeah. Now, if this all seems like too complicated, I kind of like the back of that S. Yeah, it's probably worth it. I could, of course, just use the pin tool and, and trace my, my S, which is what I thought I would do, but there might be things I can use from this. That can be helpful. But I'm going to delete a lot of those unnecessary anchor points first. The ones without curves, mostly. All right. So when you have a curve on both sides, that gives you a lot of flexibility. You don't have a curve on both sides, that's what the convert anchor point tool is for. But in some places, it's nice to just have a curve on one side. Curve on both sides. Don't need that. Curve on one side. Maybe we can make that work. You don't want any of your text to feel weak. lose in a fight to the others. That's why I want to keep some straights in this if possible.
Now remember, there's always the smooth tool if you need it. Evening out and averaging out these curves. Can prove very useful and helpful. And I want this S to be bigger, just like in my sketch. I guess I do want it to hook back so I still have room for this underscore. So I'm trying to be open to different approaches. That means really widening out this curve. And giving this a curve using the convert anchor point. And that way you can work on both sides of the, the curve separately. Okay, almost there. So it's going to take a little bit of smoothing with the smooth tool, but let's see it at 100%. You can see it's a little wonky. So then I go under the pencil tool to the smooth tool and make sure it's selected so I can see the anchor points. And I'm going to average out those curves. In some places it needs to create a curved anchor point on both sides, but that's okay. Curves are more complicated than straights. There we go. So I have a nice strong S can hold up to everything. Yeah, I not not sold on the straight there, so I might have to arc it over the top a little bit. And that's why I like to see it without the sketch, because that can modify what you're seeing. So instead of keeping it straight at the top, let's bring this anchor point up a little bit. And maybe tip this down. Even without the convert anchor point tool, you can always push handles back to their source. There we go. There. All right. Because the trajectory of the curve really matters. I was worried about that, but I think that's working okay. I could try moving this point a little bit more severely. Yeah, and that gives me maybe a slightly more pleasant negative space. Let's see. Yep, I like it with a little bit more. Okay. We're almost there. You're gonna do a comic book kind of thing, gotta have an exclamation point. I can see if my type has it built in. Uh, I might as well use the type on path to do that. So I find that one, unlock it, use the type tool, type on path tool. Make sure I'm on that layer. And just add exclamation point. Now some typefaces come with, especially ones from Defont, there we go. Some of them come with special characters and many don't. <laughs> but what I can do is simply copy, lock, close, new layer, paste in place, It was in place, it's way over here because it's not on the path anymore. But then I can right click on it and create outlines to turn it into vector shapes that I can then modify just, just as I have them.
So it's interesting that when you copy a type on path tool without the path, it's going to straighten it back up. I'm going to go ahead and lock this layer. Now do be mindful, just like when you're using shape tools, when you're using perfect circles, whenever you distort them and tilt them, they're going to change. I'm okay with that, but I'll try to keep that circle pretty clean. And then if I want to, because this letter form is made of two, I can always use the lasso tool and the small selection tool and move them independently of each other. And then let's take it down to 50%. And I just get to decide where to put the curves, the slight curves in my exclamation point. I kind of like that it's centered above it there. But I want to add curves on that side. And on that side. So it bulges out a little. Use a small selection tool and move these anchor points around. Could go with the momentum of my design. Keep it subtle. Still a little too pointy right there. Fine tune that curve. And then bring it back to 100%. Oh no, this is one of those instances. Okay, so when this happens, even though it's at 100%, it's obviously not 100%. It's, it's because I change different parts of it differently. So what do I do? I copy it. I'm going to paste it into the layer I've been working on. Turn that off. So edit, paste in place while it's selected. I'm going to try to fill it. Let's see. Can I do convert it to a stroke? I've solved this in the past, I said to think how. So I've got the outlines. Uh, edit. The object path. Nope. Actually, this might be a good solution. So, object, to make sure I'm just selecting just this. I don't want to do this to everything. Object path outline stroke. There we go. Now, what I can do is maybe use the Pathfinder. I'm sure I'm missing something really obvious, but I want to merge it with this layer. It's kind of crazy, you can't just fill it with the color you want. Ah, that's that's the smart way. So yeah, I can use the dropper tool and then click on something. The transparency, when this like glitch happens, it makes it really tough. Yeah, maybe. That's a great option, just to click somewhere else, but it's just not, not doing it. So let's save it. And then if nothing else, I mean, it's not hard to, to draw with the pink tool using those anchor points, knowing what it will do. But that's the, the danger of using transparency to see your sketch underneath. Things like this can happen. 